Hi, this is the last part of a three-part video series about uh, 433 MHz uh, radio communication using uh, some simple uh, transmit-receive devices and playing around with an Arduino and with an oscilloscope. Uh, I highly advise that you watch at least the second part before watching this one and preferably the first two parts. Anyway, um, let's dig in. That being said, let's get back to the Arduino and our circuit again. And for the moment, I'm gonna disconnect our devices and set them aside and focus just on the Arduino. And here's what we'll do. We are going to remove this loop code that generates the signal with an equivalent form but which is using timers, internal Arduino timers. Um, Arduino has three timers, timer 0, 1 and 2, which uh, are already inter internally used by various functions such as the delay function behind the scenes, but now we're going to use them explicitly so we're going to be using timer 1 explicitly uh, uh, this is the one that controls the PVM I think so this will also have an effect of deactivating the P PWM generation capabilities but we don't need that so in short what we do here we uh, configure some registers uh, with some values such that um, when the internal counter um, which uh, increments a value in a register reaches this value I'll tell you how we obtain this value in a moment when it reaches this value it then calls a function the function which we declared here with the ISR syntax timer1 compare array vector and it's gonna execute this code in this uh, code the first instruction that we do is to reset the timer this is one way to do it there are other ways as well and then we do our uh, what we want to do meaning to write something on the right pin and then uh, change the state such that next time this when this function gets called we write the opposite so that we have a high low high low high low in essence what what we did here now uh, in order to to specify for example that this uh, function run every 10 milliseconds or 50 or 500 milliseconds uh, we have to work with two concepts. One is called a prescaler, which means to divide the clock frequency of the Arduino by this value. So, if uh, the Arduino uh, crystal, which is at uh, 16 megahertz, we divide it by this value, we get about 62 kilohertz. Then, the opposite of frequency is. Um, uh, it's it's the length of time, so the pulse time, and we get around 16 microseconds. Now, if we want to do something every, let's say, 50 milliseconds, then we divide 50 milliseconds by 16 microseconds, and we do the conversion, so we would get this number. And this is the number we put in this register, the compare register. So what happens internally is that uh, another register gets incremented every... 62 kilo every uh, 256th time of of the clock of the clock cycle and when it reaches this value then this function gets called actually remove this and let's also activate the set timer so we call this that uh, initializing function and this will take care of the rest and I think that's it so let's upload this code and um, let's see what we got on the oscilloscope Ok, 
Come on. Freaking hate this. Okay. Well, it's not exactly what. Oh. Of course, it's not exactly what I want. Okay. So, as we can see here, we have our pulses. And if, for example, now I'm gonna change the number from 3, 1 to 5 to 3, 1, oh, what did I do? To 3, 1, 2, that's roughly a factor of 10. And I upload this again. Sorry, I f did a boo boo here. There we go. We should see that again we have a square wave with a 100 Hz frequency, so it's 10 times bigger. Now, why did we do all of that? That's the moment to adjust my freaking camera. There you go, it's drill again. <laughs> so, why did we do that? Because now we are free to do whatever else we want here in this loop. So for example, we can do this. We can read a pin and display its result on the on the serial port as often as we can. Let me activate the serial. Now, what pin am I talking about? Well, I'm gonna do something neat and we're going to plug in the output back from the output from pin 9 into pin 8 so we read what we wrote and let's see what we get uh, come on not sure how visible it is I'll have to do And now if we go to serial monitor we should see 010101 so our signal but this is the cool part if we go to serial plotter we're gonna see our signal here almost and it's a it's a big almost like we did on the oscilloscope so that is what I said about a neat trick earlier in the video that you can sort of use the serial plotter and the serial communication to have like a, a poor man's oscilloscope but this comes with a lot of warnings and uh, things you have to be aware of for example I've deliber deliberately set the serial speed to 1200 1, baud so now whenever we send our we send our value using print because this is a an integer and we're converting it to a character and we're actually sending a character a character is 8 bytes so uh, if we have 1200 bytes per bits per second and if we divide that by 8 sorry about that uh, Okay, and we divide by 8. That's about 150 bytes per second. So, even though print line and write and all, all the functions from serial are asynchronous, they rely on a buffer, and when that buffer fills up, they will be blocking. So, after a while, if we try to send more than 150 bytes per second, we can't, because this function will block until the proper amount of time passes to respect the protocol speed so in other words we can run this loop maxim maximally 150 times a second if we had a faster signal even though if we, we, we can read it fast enough and in, we, in principle send it fast enough we don't because we're limited by the, by the protocol speed of course we can always um, uh, increase the speed to like way bigger numbers both here and here but the problem wouldn't go away it would be just further away so we would still run into it under some certain circumstances so 
that's one problem another aspect is that you sh we shouldn't uh, do the sampling and sending in the loop we should also use a timer to make sure we sample at fixed intervals and so on and so forth so there there are a lot of things to consider if you want to uh, use the serial serial plotter in a in a predictable and uh, way that actually delivers results not just noise but just wanted to briefly mention all of this now why did I mention all of this because because instead of reading what we write which makes no sense now we can actually couple our circuit again to the Arduino send our signal to our sender and read from our receiver so now we actually have a full transmission over the air and we can check if it works without having to use an oscilloscope just the Arduino so if we turn on the serial monitor well apparently we got zeros for now let's see why because I haven't turned on the power for the rest of the circuit that's why because I'm stupid So now we see there's zeros and ones. Let me try to adjust this again. And now if you go to the serial plotter, we see how the received signal looks like. Of course this is pretty much unusable and no same person would do it this way. I'm just showing you the fact that you can. And while we are on the topic of what you, we can and cannot do, uh, I want to show you something else. So normally when you play with these devices, uh, you would use a library. One such library is called Virtual Wire. I already installed this library. It includes some C++ uh, files and headers and uh, stuff like that. And if we were to use this library, we would do it like this. We would uh, first of all come to Arduino and add the zip included here. And then it would also appear here at the contributor libraries. Then for the sender, we would include the header, define a message, uh, a transmit pin, a speed transfer in bytes per second. In the setup, we would define the transmit pin so 12 in this case set up a speed and then in the loop let's say we would uh, send this message over and over again once every one second now the receive code would look something like this again we include the header define the speed the the pin on which to receive uh, here we we set them the receive pin the speed we start the receiver we also start our serial uh, connection to be able to open the serial monitor and then uh, in the loop we literally check every time if we got a new message and if we did we uh, it's all it's saved by this function in this buffer and also the length of the message is saved and then we print it uh, byte by byte or character by character and then print a new line now so far so good and uh, this would normally be done with two Arduinos each one connected one to the transmitter and then one to the sender but let's do something sneaky let's put the sender and the transmitter code on the same Arduino and connect it to both the sender and the transmitter so in other words send and receive at the same time now how is that possible well if we set a low enough transmission speed and since the transmission itself is not being done in the send function, this is just the 
is it the message to be sent is saved in an internal buffer and then it's being done in a interrupt and it's being done uh, at the speed mentioned here byte by byte bit by bit actually uh, we can also uh, run the receiving code which also runs in an interrupt at the same time and uh, we can send and receive actually using only one Arduino but there is a catch uh, so first of all when we send the message we don't wait for the send to finish because if we do that there's nothing to receive the message is already gone with the wind so we, we don't uh, wait here we don't call this function also in the receive uh, we block until we get the message and then we we get and display the message and in the loop we simply call these two functions send and receive all the time and there's one more trick I had to do I opened the C++ file for virtual wire and in the interrupt um, routine so the one that happens periodically we see there's a section which deals with the transmission and a section this function PLL phase loop lock which deals with the reception unfortunately they are mutually exclusive so they are also guarded by this if statement I replaced the if statement which explicitly checks so if you want to receive you must not be transmitting at the same time and vice versa so I disabled those checks and when I compile this with the modified uh, C++ uh, code and then if we go to serial monitor we see that we're both sending and receiving and we're getting the message through the air so to be more specific about what I'm saying if we look here so we have one pin that goes to our sender the sender sends over the air to the receiver the receiver has another wire connected to the different pin on the Arduino and what we're sending on the send pin we're actually getting back on the receive pin and it's all working and I'm not kidding you so if you like this video and maybe you want to learn more about uh, the code behind virtual wire or anything else on this topic please uh, leave a like a comment and I will uh, try to make uh, subsequent videos where I go into much more detail than what I went in today